Hello folks, and welcome to a little mini-series that we're going to be doing um, on coupling a motor and gearbox uh, for a Mazda RX-8 project being undertaken by a friend of mine. So first of all, I want to apologise for the background noise. Uh, it's a rather cold day and I don't like being cold, so I went ahead and got myself one of these little propane fired heaters um, so it's it's basically kicking out plenty of heat to keep me warm here so um, I suppose I decided to do this just uh, to kind of document what is probably one of the stumbling blocks that a lot of people um, fall down on when they're starting an electric vehicle build I mean once you get the, uh, the engine and gearbox out, uh, you're kind of you're, you're kind of left with a big uh, kind of a black hole in the middle of the car that you need to fill, and um, it's very easy to lose um, confidence at that time and kind of just die away from the project. So, what we're going to do is be a very short little mini se uh, series. We're going to show you how to do. Um, a motor and gearbox coupler on a budget uh, with just minimalist tools and equipment. Now obviously people doing more elaborate and more expensive builds just hand the whole thing, thing off to a machine shop. But I've never done that and I don't intend to start now. So let's just jump straight in and we'll have a look at the basics and how we're going to tackle this. So, on the floor here, uh, we have the manual gearbox um, from the Mazda. I've just got a rag over this here because they kind of have the gear shifter and the prop shaft just go straight in the back and I don't want anything to fall in there. It's a pretty standard manual gearbox um, and my friend uh, supplied me with the clutch friction plate as um, as is required. Now the motor that we're going to be using is going to be one of these Siemens 1PV5138 uh, liquid cooled AC induction motors. Um, and I got two of those out of a out of a decommissioned bus uh, which I think I might have mentioned in a past video and we're going to basically couple this motor uh, to this gearbox um, Pretty much, as I say, using a minimum of machined and uh, bought-in parts. So, basically, it entails two things. It entails mechanically joining the drive from the motor shaft to the gearbox input shaft, and then physically coupling uh, the bell housing of the gearbox to the front, uh, the front mounting. Uh, for our electric motor. Now, a lot of these motors you can pick up second hand now have got spline shafts on them. So, even thinking about uh, Nissan Leaf and so on, any of the motors in there will have a spline shaft that's basically dedicated to fit into a gearbox. Now, if you're kind of lucky enough and you get the gearbox as, as I did, uh, with some pretty serious disassembly, you can usually get a component um, that basically has the female spline. And that's what I managed to do here with, uh, th with this guy. And it pretty much, um, pretty much should, uh, unless I'm putting it on the wrong way around, which I might be. No, I'm not. There it is. That pretty much sits up onto the spline and gives us something to work with. Now, in the gearbox, you'll then have the clutch friction plate, and that's got the spline bits here that we need to go onto the the first motion shaft. Now, thing you're going to notice straight away here is that the shaft on the motor is very long. And it's very long because um, it was designed to go into a gearbox. So if we were to just do this, 
we'd have a very large gap here uh, which would cause the motor to be sitting further back in the engine bay which we don't want and it would put a lot of strain on whatever coupling mechanism uh, that I decide to, to build here. Well, the first order of business is to see just how much uh, that we can cut this back. So, trying to do this one hand, it never really works out, does it? I'm going to pop this off and we'll come back and I'll show you, you guys what I mean uh, when I'm trying to minimize the distance um, between the two mating surfaces. Alright, so straight away, uh, if we just look in here, we can see that the splines, um, if I just went ahead and I cut the nose off the first motion shaft um, and I was to mount my clutch disc basically straight on to the face of this guy once I have him cut back, then I would still have this gap here, uh, which is still rather significant. Now, <clears throat> you might be tempted to cut this motor shaft back and then try to get something to mount on here, maybe key it or weld it or do something like that. I'm not going to do that in this, in this case. Um, I thought I would, but I'm actually going to continue to use the existing splines here. Um, from a perspective of trying to mount something on here without taking the rotor out and machining it, uh, would be a real nightmare. So we're going to stick with, uh, we're going to pretty much stick with the, the, the plan here, which is to leave the motor shaft um, intact. And what we're going to do instead, let's move the light around a bit. What we're going to do instead is, let's pop this off here, give you guys some more light. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to remove the, the clutch fork and we're going to cut back this tube that the release bearing runs on so that we have the maximum amount of splined input shaft available to us. And we'll then cut up the clutch disc so that we get the center out and we'll cut this guy back so that we have the shortest possible um, piece to go on to the motor and then we're going to see how it looks distance wise and um, yeah see how we're going to mate these two up alrighty so I'll turn off the heater for a bit to give you to give you guys a break from the noise while we have a look at the next part so what we got here is our coupler um, for the motor side so the first thing that we need to do uh, with this is we need to determine where we're going to cut this so you've got a few choices you can use a vernier caliper to measure the, the distance down to the splines inside uh, but if you don't have a piece of kit like that available any kind of a long bolt or a piece of metal uh, like this will work also so this is what we're going to do we're going to simply run the bolt down the inside side until it hits the, sp the splines then we're going to mark it here so that's the distance now down to the splines inside and we can now place our bolt um, as parallel as we can kind of get it which is a bit tricky of course because it is this helical gear but if I kind of put it here like so, that kind of tells me that my splines begin here. So I'm going to mark this here, just on the tooth of that gear. And what we're then going to need to do is we're going to need to cut around um, the gear, or cut around the piece, um, so that we can have a, a surface then to mount our um, clutch center on. Now, 
traditionally I would use my metalwork lathe uh, to do this. I simply mount the piece in the chuck, spin it, and then use the grinder to cut this while it was spinning. Um, and you know that would then let me get a straight line cut here. But not everyone is going to have a metalwork lathe available to them, and I'm going to assume that. Uh, if you're kind of following this kind of a budget kind of a way to do things that you probably don't have that kind of a tool available so I'm going to show you another way so I'm going to go back to our motor uh, let's move over a bit here move some of this stuff out of the way and we're going to take our uh, spline piece that we just that we just marked I'm going to fit it back onto the motor shaft. I'm going to put it right there, okay? So that it's made it up on it. I'm just going to tap that. Um, just make sure that's as far in as it can physically get. We have our mark here. So what we're now going to do, um, and again, I'm going to assume that you, you, you don't have a means to spin the motor. I could rig up an inverter to it and get it to spin, but we don't actually need to do that. Uh, there is a way to uh, cheat, which I'm going to show you next. All right, so for this next part, you're going to want your motor um, in a fairly open space where you can easily move around um, this part of it and you've got no obstructions. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of judo. You see, we could simply come along and mount this in a vise and cut this, but it's never going to cut straight. And if this doesn't cut straight, then you're going to have a wobbly coupler that's going to rapidly break or damage the gearbox or the motor. Normally, to get a cut straight, we would have this guy spinning. But again, I'm going to assume you don't have a lathe or you don't have a means to spin the motor by itself at this particular stage in your build. So, we're going to use um, a thin cutting wheel in the angle grinder. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to cut very, very gently like this. Now, what will happen as the grinder wheel starts to touch and cut is that the motor will start to, to spin um, and build up speed. As the motor builds up speed, the grinder is going to cut less and less because it's, it's, it's going to be spinning in the same direction um, or in the, yeah, in the same direction as the wheel wants to cut. So once we get this spinning fast and we find that the grinder isn't throwing out um, as many uh, sp sparks, we're going to very quickly flip over this side, uh, leaving our grinder switched on and make the cut again and then the motor will be spinning against us which is what we need and we're going to flip sides uh, until we cut down <coughs> and we get the cut as straight as we can get it at this at this particular time so let's go ahead and see what happens So here is our um, gear piece basically cut off and um, I did actually have to cheat and machine this a little bit because it didn't work out as cleanly as I wanted it to. Now that being said, you know, if you do the hard work, you take this to a machine shop, 
on a big lathe, it's going to take them five minutes uh, to face that off. So you're not talking about a big cost uh, to do something like that. So probably, you know, 10, 20 bucks, whatever their minimum charge would be. Uh, but it does give us now nice uh, surface, perfectly square to our motor shaft. So the next part that we want to do now is going to be to work out how we're going to mount the clutch centerpiece on here. All right, so now we get this guy ready for action. Next thing we got to do is get our clutch center out. Now, most of these clutch plates are built the same way, but it'll depend on how your one's built. But this one got these four rivets here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an angle grinder and just grind the heads off these these guys here and uh, we should be all set then to take this up apart and take out uh, the bit that we need. shouldn't be under any real tension but who knows so better safe than sorry right showing you guys what we're going to be doing I uh, hope you enjoy it um, if you want a few more regular or updates on this and some of my more usual projects uh, check me out on Instagram at EVBMW and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you all next time thanks for watching